Now, as I told you just now, that if no external force acts on a system, then what will happen? The velocity of the center of mass of the system will remain the same. Very good example of it I am giving you. This is the example of center of mass motion. I want to give you an example of the motion of the center of mass. Right. Try to follow it. Simple. Suppose there is a firecracker. Understand? There is a, let us say, there is a firecracker. Suppose a firecracker is, is thrown from this point, okay, in the ignited state. It is burnt and it has been thrown. And suppose during its flight, it explodes at this point. Try to follow me. The firecracker is thrown from here in the ignited state. Okay. And suppose it bursts here when it comes here in the during its flight when it is coming here it bursts what will happen if it bursts its fragments will be moving in the different directions look here I have written parabolas of fragments all these fragments are moving in the parabolic path but the separate parabolic paths in the different parabolic path but if we check then the center of mass of this system all the fragments they must have a center of mass the center of mass of that system will follow the original parabolic path original parabolic path which have been followed by the original firecracker understood if that means I need to say if it would have been thrown from here it should have if it is not ignited, it should have followed some original path. So what it says, its center of mass still will follow the same parabolic path, which it would have been followed by the complete firecracker in the unignited state. Right? Why it happens? Here also the same principle is followed. No external force. The firecracker is not. It, it has the explosion has not taken place due to the external force it has taken place due to the internal forces so due to the internal forces it happens so conservation is followed okay velocity is remaining conserved velocity is remaining constant velocity velocity of the center of mass of the system is remaining the same it's a very good example of this velocity of the center or the center of mass motion. These were the things which we have discussed regarding the center of mass of the system, its position of the center of mass, velocity of the center of mass, momentum, right? And after that, that the velocity of the center of mass motion. Its example also we have given. After these things, now I simply change my topic. I change my topic to my next topic is the rigid bodies. Let us now see what is a rigid body. Actually rigid body is that which cannot, whose shape and size cannot be changed by the application of the force. If the force is applied on the body, its shape and size cannot be changed, it cannot be deformed. That is called a rigid body. And a rigid body is supposed to be made up of very small, a large number of the mass points. Particles, mass points. <coughs> a rigid body is supposed to be made up of a large number of the mass points. Bahut sare point masses se bana hua hai ek rigid body. Aur wo rigid body kya hai? The rigid body is that which cannot be <coughs> which cannot be deformed, its shape and size cannot be changed by the application of the force. Okay, such a type of rigid body let us consider and now we are coming to the with the help of this rigid body or of this rigid body there is a rotational motion. Very important thing. There is certainly a difference between 
circular motion and rotational motion. Till now, we were not concentrating on that rotational motion. Now we shall now we shall concentrate on the rotational motion exactly what it is. Exactly what it is. Let us now see what it is exactly the rotational motion. Okay. See. This is one axis of rotation. Let us say this is suppose I say AB. AB is an axis of rotation. Okay. And any rigid body, this is a rigid body. I told you what is a rigid body. This rigid body is rotating about it. What is the meaning of rotation? Rotation means the rigid body is made up of a large number of point masses. I have shown mainly three. One, two, three. These three point masses. Okay. These point masses are always at certain distance. Suppose uh, this first point mass is at the distance R1, second is at R2, third is at R3. Let us say. And point masses are, let us say, M1, it is M2, it is M3. Suppose, for an example. Then, what happens when the rotation of the rigid body will be taking place? Okay. When the rigid body's rotation will be taking place, then what happens? Every point mass will make the circular motion. Every point mass will make the circular motion and all these circular motions will be in a particular plane here in the horizontal plane. All the circular motion is taking place in a particular plane, right? And centers of all circular motion will fall, fall on the axis of rotation. I repeat, rotational motion means when a body rotates about an axis of rotation, then all the point masses, point masses constituting the body will make circular motion in parallel planes. They will make circular motion in parallel planes. And center of all circular motion will fall on the axis of rotation. Is M1 will make a circular motion of radius R1. M2 will make the circular motion of radius R2. M3 will make the circular motion of radius R3. But all are in the parallel planes. Such a type of motion is called rotational motion. Obviously, there is the difference between the rotational motion and translatory motion. In a translatory motion, what happens? In a, in a translatory motion, you can say, what happens in a translatory motion? In the translatory motion, the body will go straight. Okay. Velocity, linear velocity, linear displacement, linear acceleration. But here, the body is making the rotational motion. That means, every particle is making the circular path. In this case, we have the, we have the, Angular displacement, angular velocity, angular acceleration. All right, these things will be there. So now I am going to discuss the equations of rotational motion. Right, equations of rotational motion, which will be very similar to the equations of the translatory motion, which we have done in the kinematics. When I will do it, when you will see this, I think it will be very clear to you. This is not at all difficult. So, in the next lecture, I am going to discuss the equations of rotational motion. Alright?